Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Center for Spiritual Living, Pleasant Valley. Good morning out there on Facebook Live. Welcome to our Sunday service on September 11th this morning. I'm Reverend Kelly Bershinsky. I'm excited to be here with you. And help me, if you will, welcome our musical inspiration today, a longtime friend of this beautiful center, Alberto Dalpino. So, since uh, the theme is finding magic, uh, there's no culture that has more magical in it than the Irish culture. With all the leprechauns, the fairies, and the pixies, and all that, and um, and today I, I, I didn't decide to play a, a traditional Irish song that is called Larkin's Beehive. And uh, it's a story between fairies and bees. And, uh, and how the man that keeps the beehives um, is uh, really annoyed by all these uh, things going on between the bees and the fairies. So here we go with Larkin's Beehive. <laughs> Alberto, you played that just like I taught you this week. <clears throat> exactly as instructed. <laughs> I promise you, if I played that like that, that would be finding magic for doggone sure. That would require a magic trick um, without any question. So let me ask you about this. 
Let me welcome you again, but let me ask you, since we were here last week and we unveiled the September theme of finding magic, did you find magic in the last week? Yes? Did you notice magic somewhere in your life as you were out in the hustle and bustle of the world? Did you spot magic? And I hear Reverend Joyce Bennett Hall say yes to that. I am quite certain you found magic because you just returned from uh, Croatia and Slovenia, and I'm sure you witnessed magic uh, on your international travels in the last couple of weeks. So welcome back, and I'm I'm glad to have you here. I'm honored that you're here. You just returned last night, I know, and you're here this morning. So um, I love that. And so uh, we have this monthly theme of finding magic. And I've got a little affirmation along with this. Can you guys see that affirmation there? Able to see that sort of? Um, so take a look at it, and we're going to do this affirmation together, okay? Just right here. I believe in magic because I see it every day. All right, let's do it once again. I believe in magic because I see it every day. Well, you know, the way I, the way I feel about that is that not to, not to diss any musical acts or anything like that, not to diss um, Bono or you too, but I think very often we do find what we are looking for. And so as we're out in the world, as we, as we train our minds in that way, as we go out actively seeking that which you might call magic or miraculous or just special and wonderful, it's so much easier to, to witness those things, to see them in the world when we go out in active pursuit. So... Your mission, should you choose to accept, is to look for magic this week. If you have a little notebook or a little journal or something, write that down. If you see something that strikes you as intriguing or magical, write that down so that it, it drives home that idea of what we are looking for, how we are using our minds in the world. Okay, so... I am going to ask the magic in the form of Reverend Lynn Chaplin Noe to come up. And Reverend Lynn is going to take us into the flames of faith this morning. You're welcome. Thank you. Let's see if I can read. I can read. Can you hear me? Good. And this is a sacred ceremony that we perform to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from that one great universal presence, which we all call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. First, we light the candle of the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle of the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle of Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle of Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle of all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle of all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle of the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle of all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. 
We light the candle for all of those who are as yet unaware of the power and presence of spirit in their lives and for the space that we are holding for them at this center and for all religions unnamed in this ceremony. Finally, as we light the healing candle, please put silently into the light the names of anyone you wish to have experienced the healing flame of God's eternal love. And so it is. The boss just told me. Let's have an opening treatment, shall we? So I see you're all comfortable and relaxed, and your feet are on the floor, and you're breathing beautifully, I can tell. But let's now become very focused and bring our awareness to this space and close our eyes. And know along with me these certain truths as I speak in the first person with I am statements that I am aware of a power and a presence and a way of life which is all God, forever full, forever complete, forever expressing itself through and by means of all life. And with equal certainty, I know that I am the divine, individualized expression of all that God is. And so I breathe deeper into this moment, into this sacred space, and I am aware of the presence, this presence, this presence right here and right now, the presence of love, the presence of community, the presence of dedication and devotion and intelligence, creativity, goodness, light. And it is in this presence that I open myself up to all that is unfolding in, in, unfolding in this service today. All that is being said, all that is being guided, all that is being expressed. I am open. I am receptive to this presence and the presence of it in everything that unfolds today. And I am so very grateful for these truths of oneness with source and with the presence that loves and guides me so impeccably so I release these loving truths into the law of mind. I allow divine mind to take care of the details while I enjoy this beautiful, expressive, wonderful service. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is now my turn to step down. Thanks, Reverend Lynn. Thanks so much. And so just stay in that same energy. Just take a deep breath in to that presence which Reverend Lynn talked about, to the deepest part of yourself. And just stay in that energy, in that prayerful, reverent, sacred energy as Alberto takes us into more music. So once again, Find the magic, and uh, there is one uh, composer in Ireland that uh, brought all the magic that we were talking about before uh, into music, and that is uh, Mr. Turlough Carolan, one of my favorite composers of Ireland, and uh, the very first song he wrote. Uh, it's called Shebeg and Shemore, which talks about the sacred hills of the fairies. In Shemore, which is a, a place, an actual place, there are two mounds, and from millennia, it has been thought that one mound is 
populated by a fairy tribe and the, the, the other mound, which is a little smaller, which is Shimon, uh, Shibet, it's uh, populated by another tribe of fairies. And the two, in times, always fought for the territory. So he wrote this song, Shibeg and Shimon, which I'm going to play for you right now. And the song is from 1785, 400 years old almost. feel better already. <laughs> mm. And I'm going to ask Reverend Lynn to come back up, and she has uh, something to share today about balance, I believe. Yeah, you stay here. Yeah. Because last, last week you got to do a magic trick. I did a magic trick. So I'm going to do some magic tricks. First of all, I'm going to read for my first trick. I will read the longest sentence ever known to mankind. 
Every complex cognitive function is a result of engagement of a network of multiple regions distributed throughout both hemispheres acting in coordinating ways. Whew. May I have the slide, please? And this is where that's happening. Right there. That's magic. That is magic. All of that that I just read is happening within your body, within your brain, within every cell in your body right now. That's a magic trick. I say, let's have a round of applause for the creator, shall we? <laughs> Darn good. And so what I'd like to talk about is the left brain and the right brain and bringing these two together so that they can do that function, that wonderful function of, of operating in, in a, such a precise manner, in such a, a, a trustworthy manner. This is how we heal ourselves through our minds. You see this little, I'm sorry, up there in Facebook land, hold on. See this little space there? For me, that's the magic veil. And when I do exercises that join the right brain and the left brain, I lift that magic veil and there is balance and there is unity and there is activity. We would call it a divine activity and that's exactly what it is because the creator did this wonderful job. So we're going to do some brain health exercises. These are the magic tricks for the day, and you're going to do them with me. Are you going to do them with me? I'm going to try. Okay. It's pretty simple. Those of you who wish to stand up, would you care to stand up, please? Especially practitioners. Especially the practitioners. Stand up, everybody. Good, good. So this is a wonderful exercise that I do frequently before I speak or before I come to a class and I want to have a very focused, very focused um, uh, uh, commitment to what's being told. So this is pretty darn easy, but this is a balancing act. So trick number one, take your right foot, bring it in front of the left foot, then bring it around and place it on the left side of the left foot. Now bring your right hand, hold on to your left hand, bring it down and up. Now, if you can find a center of focus, something to focus on. Now see, my legs are shaking a little. This is a balancing trick. And the more we balance and the more we focus, the calmer we become and the more those two hemispheres join. That's the trick, and that's magic. Because when those two hemispheres join, that's when the longest sentence in the world happens. <laughs> now bring your hands down. We're going to do it on the other side, so make certain that we join the two hemispheres. Bring the left foot up in front of the right foot and to the side of the right foot. If you're sitting, you can also do this. This is pretty easy to do when you're sitting. In fact, I wish I were sitting right now. Now take, <laughs> take your left hand, hold your right hand, up they go, and find a focal point, something to focus on. You can do this before anything where you really do want to be focused and committed to what's being presented to you, like a wonderful talk that we're about to see. It's a wonderful way to come in and before we see the service. And come on down. Very good. One more. This is a great magic trick, and it's very easy. So you just have to pat yourself on the shoulder and tell yourself how great you are. So I'm great. I'm great. No, you're not. Yes, you are. No, you're not. Yes, you are. No, you're not. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. OK. And one more, and this reminds me of when I was a child. And my mother asked me to do things around the house, and I didn't want to do them. Um, asked my husband, Buzz, uh, I still don't want to do them. <laughs> but I got to. And so this is what I used to do. No, I don't want to do it. Oh, no, 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 no. What you're doing is joining those hemispheres. And when you do that, 
that wonderful activity, that wonderful relationship between the cells. As, as um, Detective Poirot would say, the little gray cells are working very well now. Yes? Yes. And so it is. Thanks, Reverend Lynn. So I, I make of that um, the idea that a lack of balance then maybe comes from not joining those hemispheres, from using predominantly um, left brain or predominantly right brain rather than merging. Is that, is that the way I would understand that? Okay, got it. Thank you so much. All right. Back to... Alberto Dalpino, he is going to perform another song and lead us into the Sunday message. Alberto. And uh, the song I chose to sing today, it's a song by James Taylor. Kelly this morning uh, defined him, and it's so very true. He's the national treasure of this country. He's one of the best, not only composers or songwriters, but also a guitar player that is extraordinary, and a singer. So I chose this song because of the message, uh, the secret of life, the secret of life, this has been a, a, a question ever since humankind saw the light of the sun. Where are we supposed to do? Where are we supposed to go? What is the secret of being here? Well, according to James Taylor, there's nothing to it. The secret of life is just enjoying the passage of time. And, uh, you know, the concept is not new. But the way uh, James Taylor put it together in this song is just remarkable. So I'm going to try to sing this song, and I hope you like it as well. Show some style. Give us a smile now. He's a need a lovely ride. Sliding down and gliding down. Try not to try too hard. It's just a lovely ride. Through space, it's a smile upon. 
Thank you, Alberto, and thank you, James Taylor. Um, is that, does that song, do you know that song? I suspect many of you know that song. kind of takes me back uh, just to a different era almost, an era where time seemed simpler and the music was just divine, that era of the early and mid-1970s and that James Taylor song. And so... If you have ever wondered about the secret of life, you'll be glad that you showed up today because James Taylor, as channeled by Alberto Del Pino, laid that out very well for us in that simple concept that the secret of life is enjoying the passage of time that I am just in this life enjoying every moment as it passes before my eyes. And for the early bird special this morning, James Taylor even threw in bonus information about the secret to love, if you've ever wondered about that. And he said that the secret to love is in opening up your heart. Those sound like lofty and noble ideals to me. That we can have an amazing experience, a joyous experience of life, simply by opening our hearts, walking through this life, open arms, open heart, open mind, in an effort to enjoy those moments as they pass by. My God, that sounds important to me. Does that sound important or feel important? It in in my mind it conjures up the notion um, that this is how life is supposed to be lived, that this is the level at which I am supposed to live my life. Does that feel right to you? It's kind of how it feels to me as well, that I'm supposed to be in that vein. And so let me ask you, where are you on the spectrum of that? Where are you? Do you enjoy every single moment as it passes by? Or are there occasionally some obstacles standing in the way of full-on, full-out, open-hearted enjoyment? Sometimes some obstacles? Yeah. Sometimes some obstacles, I suspect, for all of us. But it is a great barometer. It is a great direction, I think, for us to move into. And yet those, those struggles, those struggles of doing that, of living in that full-on way, um, I, I saw a an explanation of that some years ago. And I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. Um, but Alfie and I were traveling, and it was, I think it was my birthday. We're in San Diego, California. And I, I would discover this explanation about why is there this struggle? Why is it that I want this extraordinary expression of life? And sometimes I struggle to achieve that. And we're in San Diego one afternoon in Balboa Park. Probably many of you, if not all of you, have been there at some point. We're in Balboa Park, and this particular afternoon, within Balboa Park, in the San Diego Museum of Art. 
and we looked at a number of art pieces and exhibits there, and there was one particular exhibit on display at that time by a modern-day artist, and his name is Jose Maria Cano. He is from Spain. And he had an exhibit there that um, was in sort of this private room, and, and so we stuck our heads in the door of this room just to, just to peer into it and see if it was something that um, caught our interest. And as we looked in there, it was this stunning array of portraits. And the, you know, the museum lights shining down onto each one of them, and they just sort of came to life. They were not particularly colorful or anything like that, but these portraits were just in some way stunning and striking as we peered in this room. And so we walked in so that we could see this, and this, this collection is uh, what is known as an apostolate. If you know that verbiage, anybody know what that is? An apostolate is a collection of 12 portraits um, representing the 12 apostles. And Senor Cano uh, did one of these. And so we went in and looked around, and our, our attention was immediately drawn to the faces on these things as they were lit up in these museum, this museum lighting and that sort of thing. But it was a, a striking difference when we came up to those paintings and began to look at them because they had so enthralled us. And then when we got up to see them, we realized that the way he painted these things was to, to highlight things like bloodshot eyes and very thin aging skin through which vessels and, and veins were protruding and that sort of thing. And so what started out as this sort of enthralling process with these, with these um, portraits became almost disturbing in a way. They were so, it, it was kind of an ominous feeling, I would describe it as. And I would understand why when I read the placard, which was next to his work, and it was intentional on his part, this was the, the um, idea that he was going for. This is the energy, the emotion, which he sought to evoke by means of this artwork. And if you put that, that quote up, it says this, it says uh, regarding his work that he used multiple layers of resin and wax and that this results in a translucency which has both visual and spiritual ramifications. It embodies the conflict between the material and non-material aspects of the human condition. And the real clincher for me says that his paintings appear chaotic when viewed up close and yet very serene when viewed from afar. And it strikes me, and what impressed me about that, that uh, writing is that it describes life in vivid detail to me. Because there is this energy within us, this spirit within us that wants to soar and experience nothing but joy and passion and pleasure and love and kindness. And then there is this very physical aspect of life that sometimes stands in the way of that. That is that explanation for me about why I sometimes struggle even though I know that this is the experience of life I want. And so I want to share with you my talk title for today. And the talk title today is The Magic of Balance. As we seek magic throughout this month of September, The Magic of Balance is my talk title. And I just love this slide. That elephant kind of looks like the way I want to move through life, mostly. You know, he's up on a balance ball on one leg, kind of smiling, and just appears to be gliding through life easily and effortlessly with that open heart and enjoying the passage of time, enjoying every moment as it passes. And so the question for me really becomes, 
Is it possible to move through this life? Is it possible to walk through this world with the difficulties and injustices and upset and turmoil that we sometimes witness in life? Is it possible to walk through this world and view those things and still maintain this serene viewpoint which was described in the artist's work? Is it possible to walk through this world and see the injustices and upsets of life and remain just like this guy on this ball, remain perfectly balanced. And I'm talking about balance from an interior perspective, that spiritual balance, the spiritual equilibrium. Can we live in this physical world and experience that serene attitude no matter what? And if so, how do we do that? How do we go through life in serenity, regardless of the things going on around us? And so this story will take me back, I'm going to say something like 25 years, something like that, uh, mid to late 1990s. I lived in Las Vegas, Nevada, still yet. And I traveled that year to Steamboat Springs, Colorado. One of my favorite places on planet Earth, Steamboat Springs, Colorado, is my mom's hometown. It is um, the hometown where she's now laid to rest. And I was invited to Steamboat that year for a family reunion. And so flew up there, had a great time at this family reunion. It was a beautiful trip. And we stayed at the... Uh, the ski mountain. It's called Werner Mountain, the ski hill in Steamboat. Major ski area. Although we stayed at that ski hill, this was a summertime event. So we went up in the middle of the summer, and there was a, I don't know, there were probably um, 40 or so of us there for this reunion. And we stayed in this um, condo complex, condo community there. I had an aunt and uncle who owned a timeshare. And so they were able to get a room via this timeshare, and then they were able to extend that uh, privilege to all of us. So the entire family was in one room or another within this condo community. And the one thing I would say, while it was beautiful, the one thing that I would say was missing from that particular condo complex was a swimming pool. Didn't have a swimming pool, oddly enough. And it's not that I'm a big swimmer, not a big deal to me, not hugely important to me, but we had, I don't know, probably 10 or 12 little kids who would love to have had a swimming pool. Yet, in the absence of that, what we did have was there was a separate building and you went into this building and there were windows kind of on every side of it and you could slide these windows open and it was sort of open air then um, with all the windows open and in this particular building was not a swimming pool but a hot tub kind of a large hot tub and you can believe me when I tell you that the kids in our family got their money's worth out of this hot tub got our money's worth out of this hot tub. Um, they descended on this little pool of water like you have never seen. And we were there for several days, and they were scarcely ever out of this hot tub. About the only time they were out of it was when we would go into town. We drove into town and shopped and looked around and drove by the home that formerly belonged to my grandmother, that sort of thing, and they would go with us, and then we would go up into the mountains on a hike. We went to what is called Fish Creek Falls there, just on the outskirts of Steamboat Springs. And it's amazing, beautiful waterfall, two or three hundred foot waterfall, and it's glorious. And we hiked the entire trail up to the upper falls and that sort of thing. And but every time we came back right into the pool again, right back into swim trunks, right into the pool. Never, never the thought of a shower coming off that dusty, sweaty 
hillside just right back into the hot tub and there were probably 10 or 12 of these little kids that were just splashing and laughing and playing and having the time of their lives via this hot tub and so what I witnessed over the course of our stay there in this in this uh, condo complex what I witnessed was a steady degradation of the quality of the water within this hot tub. It seemed on day one, I think I might have even jumped in that hot tub on day one, but thereafter there was a steady decline. It continued just throughout our time there, that the water grew more and more and more discolored and it formed that sort of yucky foam on top of the water and all those things. I know it's very appealing and um, appetizing for me to describe this in such great detail, but this water just continued over the course of our time there to devolve, to become more tainted and more polluted, I would say, from, from little kids in there playing and kicking around and from suntan oil and sweat and anything else you could imagine that might have been going into that pool of water. And so, and so by the end of our stay the water got to a level where it was, I don't know about the consistency because I had no longer get in it, but it was about the color, if you could imagine, of split pea soup, something like that. And I will just leave to your imagination why I would compare this pool of hot water to pea soup, but I'll leave that up to you to think about. Suffice it to say, we had the place all to ourselves, so there was that going on for this little pool of water. People would come in who were staying there that we didn't know, looking for the hot tub, excited at the end of a day, you know, and would immediately see our children and that pool of water and never saw those guys again, you know. They're out the door and on their way and that sort of thing, but my brother... Pat and I have laughed about this experience over the years, time after time, and in our remembrance of it. Um, and, and yet, while it's a, a fun and favorite memory of mine, and my brother and I laugh about it, what is the point of this story in today's message. What is the point of this fun family event and that sort of thing within the context of what I'm talking about today, where I am talking about the magic of balance and walking through life with an open heart and seeking to enjoy every moment and every moment in the passage of time. What is the point of this hot tub in this story? And I tell this story for a very specific purpose. I tell this story so that I can illustrate awareness and responsibility. And that might seem a little odd given the story I just relayed, but here is what I want you to understand about that. Awareness and responsibility. In our stay there in Steamboat that particular summer, it appeared that there was no one charged with the responsibility of coming to check on this hot tub. There was nobody, it didn't seem to be a, a maintenance person or an employee, nobody came in and skimmed the scum off the top of the water or monitored the pH or balanced chemicals in an effort to keep the water clean and clear and all that sort of thing. Nobody seemed to have that job because it was never serviced or maintained in our entire stay of several days. And in the absence of that responsibility, what then happens is the water just continues to degrade. When there is nobody paying attention and when there is nobody taking responsibility for what is going into this pool of water, 
it simply grows more discolored, more tainted, more polluted over time. And so the point of that story is that this is very much the predicament in which we find ourselves as human beings on this planet, on this earth, at this time in history. This is very much a comparison for the pool in which absolutely everyone is immersed. And I'm not talking about a hot tub on a ski hill or that sort of thing. I am talking about this pool of life, this pool of consciousness, this pool that religious scientists would call mind in which we are all swimming every moment of every day. We are all in this pool of consciousness. And I suspect many of us would agree with that if we've been around this center, around religious science for some time. We could agree to that. Yes, some of us agree that yes, we are in this, in this thing and in fact, we can't, we can't not be in it. It's not like we can step over here and now suddenly we are outside of this pool of consciousness. We are in it every moment, every day, every breath, every step we ever take. Absolutely every one of us. The question really then becomes, do you have an awareness of what you are pouring into this pool? Do you have an awareness of what you are pouring into this pool via your thoughts and your attitudes and your spirit of generosity or the lack thereof? And are you willing to take responsibility for what you pour into that pool. If you can develop an awareness about what it is you're putting into life, are you then willing to take a higher level of responsibility about what you put into it? In other words, is what you are putting into this pool serving only to further discolor and pollute and taint the water in which we all swim? Or is what you put into this pool, does it have the potential to counterbalance some of those negative things that are going in? Where are you on that? What is your awareness and what is your responsibility? And if you can embrace this, if you can open your heart to this idea and to this concept, then what... Um, what level of responsibility might we then step into if we want to clean if we want to cleanse those waters a little bit what level of responsibility am i suggesting via this idea today and the level of responsibility i am talking about is laid out eloquently by Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind. And we're going to show you a quote, but I, I, want to just, I want you just to take this in before we even look at this quote or I read it or anything like that. This is an idea laid out by Ernest Holmes about how we might view life and each other in a kinder, more understanding more supportive, more uplifting way, a way in which we can look at life and the world and each other and have a positive influence on what goes into this world. And so Ernest says this in The Science of Mind. He says that all the errors of man are the result of ignorance of his own true nature. The understanding heart is filled with sympathy and helpfulness toward all. An evolved soul judges no one, condemns no one, but realizes that all are on the road of experience seeking the same goal. That's lofty, isn't it? So let me ask you, 
Is this an accurate description of what you are pouring into my pool? Is this an accurate description of what you are putting into life? Is this the way you observe it? Is this the way you look at it? When you notice error, when you notice harm, when you notice something hurtful or upsetting, do you point a finger at the perpetrator? Or does your mind immediately race to the notion that that event occurred, that that action took place merely as a result of that person's ignorance of his or her own true nature? Do you walk through life with the ability to judge no one and to condemn no one? And so this is the level of responsibility I'm talking about. Is it lofty? You're damn right it is. But folks, we need some clean water in our pool if you happen to look around what's going on in our world. We need to cleanse the waters in which we are swimming. And this is the way I am suggesting we do that, that we walk through this world living that presence which indwells us, stepping into the presence which indwells us and living the presence of God every moment of every day because if we live that presence, we walk through this world offering nothing, pouring nothing into life other than love and kindness and understanding and compassion. So is it possible to walk through the world seeing the events of the day, seeing those upsetting conflicts and, and turmoil and all those things? Is it possible to walk through this world and live in serenity? I think it's absolutely possible, and this is a perfect roadmap for how to do it. So would you like to have more serenity in your life? Would you like to walk through this world absolutely still, absolutely silent, regardless of what is going on around you, then pour this into life. Pour this into the pool of life and watch what happens. Because you have a choice in every moment. You have a choice. You can make a difference or you can continue to make pea soup. That choice is yours. Happy Sunday, everybody. Much love to all of you. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. All right. We're going to do our offertory now. Alberto is going to play and Tom and Nikki are um, taking collection. And we're going to do our, our affirmation again. And I just want to say this again. Um, this feels and seems so important to me that as we do this and as we get, begin this process and as we go forward, as you support this center financially, as you support this center in any way, just please make sure whatever you're contributing comes from your heart. That is my ask. And so let's do our affirmation together, can we please? Before reaching into my pocket, I look into my heart. I see a life that is rich in so many blessed ways. It is my heart's great desire to share with others the good that has been so generously given me. In so doing, my efforts and impact are magnified and the world is infused with a greater sense of giving. And so it is.
I will uh, make a special mention for anybody out there on Facebook Live today. Um, if you are so inclined, if you found value in this service and what we are bringing to the world and you wish to support our center, you can do that right from where you are this very moment. If you look in the chat on Facebook Live, there will be a link posted to our donation page. You uh, wouldn't even have to leave this service to do that. You could right-click on that, open it in a new tab, and it will take you straight to our donation page. Um, we would love to have you participate in this while we did so right here in the sanctuary today. So uh, that brings me to our announcements for the day and our very own Buzz Noe's coming up right now to do announcements. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. Reverend Kelly mentioned magic. It's been some magic the last two days. God has watered nature for us, so pretty good. So we could use more of that. Anyway, um, here's the announcements for today. Later today, after lesson, Reverend Pam will be over in room four to uh, provide treatment for anything going on in your life. So please feel free to visit with her, and that will help you reveal your divine perfection. And coming up Wednesday on the 14th, Reverend Kelly will be hosting a live gathering here at the center. And it's going to be in the, uh, later in the day th this time. It's going to be from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And it will discuss today's lesson and how it can apply more directly to your life. So feel free to join him here on Wednesday from 4 to 6 to talk about that. A reminder to please donate to our center. We already passed the basket, so thank everybody who has given to us today. If you were able to do that, thank you. If you want to donate online, there are still several ways through the center's website, uh, through PayPal and Zelle. It's going to let you do it all online, which is the new way to doing things. And this is new. A women's group. All women are invited to join here, and this will happen uh, when does it happen? T today. Oh, it's today after lesson also. So if you're a woman, you can be here and uh, we'll talk to the women today about how they can help the center and how they can better apply what we're doing to their lives. And so that would be a great place to be. So please feel free to stick around after lesson for that. And oh, also today after lesson, uh, there will be a, oh, it's a spiritual class coming up. This is on the, it's going to be Living the Serenity Prayer. That'll be with Reverend Kelly here at the, at the center on Thursdays. It's going to start on September 22nd. It'll be a class. Starts on September 22nd, Thursday, and goes till October 27th. And it runs in the evening from 6.30 to 9 p.m. There is a f small fee for that, $65, but it'll help you, once again, learn how to better reveal your own divine perfection as we go through life. So you feel free to join up for that. And also a reminder that our social club gatherings are going to be coming up later this month on the 26th at 6 p.m. We'll gather here live. We'll have some great refreshments and a little bit of food for dinner that everybody can bring as they feel free to provide that and bring it themselves. And we'll look forward to seeing you here on the 26th. And this is coming up also, another date to put on your calendar, October 29th, next month. There's going to be a spiritual energy fair. It's been a while since we've had one here, but they're available for everyone to come. There'll be people providing uh, psychological treatment, uh, some physical healing will be taking place, and also spiritual treatment for everyone, everyone and everything that's coming on in your life. So it'll be happening uh, most of the day. It'll go from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. right here at the center. We're going to gather everything, and so there'll be several people here for that. So please feel free to put that on your calendar and be here on the 29th. And finally, those the last few days have put some heat in our reach. It's been a great time to visit the beach. So there you go. Visit that doggy there. Thank you all for being here. And now my pleasure to bring up Reverend Kelly again, who's going to talk about what else is coming up. Come on up, Reverend Kelly. And I think he's going to introduce Alberto Del Pino, who's probably going to play another C note. Not as tall as I look. I've been told a hundred <laughs> times. Um, so, a couple things. Wednesday, 
uh, at the center. If you have the ability to do that, uh, I'll be here. I'd love to meet you. Come talk about what's going on at the center. Come talk about how you might participate, volunteer opportunities, about what we're talking about through the month of September, whatever that looks like. This Wednesday's a change. I'm going to be here from 4 to 6 p.m. So those of you who have said you couldn't make 10 to 12, I'm chasing you down. So there you have it. 4 to 6 p.m. this week. Show up, and uh, I'd love to spend some time with you, get to know you a little bit. Um, looking forward to the Serenity Prayer class. I got to tell you, um, I, this class is going to be fabulous. It is available and wonderful for anybody. It is right on the heels of this talk today about serenity. It is almost as if we planned this. But if you are, I'm sure you all have heard or know the serenity prayer. If you are someone who feels like you could utilize a little more serenity and courage and wisdom in your life, uh, we are going to dive into that little prayer um, in a really deep way. And um, it's, it's just so cool. I'm so excited about it. So uh, make plans for that. We will have that up on the website sometime soon, new website under development. So there you have it. Um, that is my story, and I'm sticking to it. And I'm going to um, do a closing treatment, and then I will turn this over to Alberto for our um, final song of the day and just to sing us back home today. So if you're comfortable doing so and you want to close your eyes for this, for this closing prayer, please do so. And so what I know right here, right now, is that there is one power, one presence, one divine mind behind all of life. It is behind me. It is behind and within and throughout each and every person here present or not. There is one thing going on at all times, and it is this living spirit. And so I simply open my heart to that in a greater way. I open my heart to spirit, to living the presence of God which indwells me in that effort of enjoying every moment of my life, diving in absolutely, wholeheartedly, open-heartedly to life right here, right now, in this moment and in every other. And I know as I do that, I come further to life. I step into that life presence within me and I am more live. I come to that understanding of power, of who and what I am, and of my mission and my purpose and my opportunity on this planet. And so for this and so much more, I am profoundly grateful. I release my word knowing it is perfect, whole, and complete right here, right now. And I do that by affirming. And so it is. So the last song for today, um, I choose another magical song, Over the Rainbow by Harold Arlen. Now the song is magical because for two reasons, at least that I know. First of all, this song is the only song that Mr. Arlen wrote for the movie, The Wizard of Oz, that was refused by the producer, who was Mr. Meyer uh, from the Metro Golden Meyer. Um, he said the song is, is too slow. It would slow the pace of the movie and look at what it became. The song is the movie. So it's all a point of view, right? But I think the magic of this composer made it happen. The second reason why it's a magical song in a way is because imagine for the first time seeing a movie in colors. Now that was magical right there. I don't know what is more magical when Everything else before that movie was black and white. So, and again, um, the title, Over the Rainbow, you know, it's something that we all wished once, at least in our life, that we found a place where everything is magically quiet and calm. So here we go. This is my rendition of um, Over the Rainbow.
Thanks, Alberto. Folks, happy Sunday, everybody. Much love. I will see you 4 o'clock Wednesday afternoon and again next Sunday. Yes? <laughs>